today, we're gonna talk about the ES-335 that got away and came back. This guitar is an early 60s, I believe 62 to 64 ES-335. So it's the holy grail. Our friend Ernie decided, I think in the 90s, to, to lend it to his friend, Joey Kramer. You may have heard of him. This dude from Aerosmith, it disappeared. You see how there's a number inside that says Aerosmith? This guitar ended up with Joe Perry playing Aerosmith shows. And granted, if I was Joe Perry and I saw my drummer with this guitar, I'd say, walk away. It's got PAF humbuckers in it. And this is exactly what you want to see. Look at all this checking. That's Joe Perry rash right there. If you can't play guitar like Joe Perry with 50 rings on your fingers, you shouldn't be an Aerosmith. Cause that's just not rock and roll. And the thing that I wonder is, are these PAFs double blacks? Are they double whites? My friend was walking around with a screwdriver, I'm tempted. The guitar that got away. My friend Ernie saw and goes, hey, I think that's my guitar. And then got it back. This is the SJ200, the Super Jumbo 200. The version that this is has the rosewood back inside. And I believe it's the, it looks like it's like the Madagascar rosewood or whatever, like this really figured beautiful rosewood. But the other thing that's very cool is if you look at this pick guard, it's all inlaid in abalone and it's signed inside by Bob Dylan. I promised my friend that if I did, if I played his guitars, I would tune them. So you, do you want to watch me tune it? I mean, I gotta be real with you. I love the SJ 200s with the rosewood backs. It, back in the day, they decided they were too boomy, but the most valuable SJ 200s are the ones that were the prototypes that had the rosewood back inside. I absolutely love the grain on this mustache bridge. You must ask me about it because this thing is unbelievable. Bob Dylan, oh, good song. This is the history of flight made by Martin. And is Brazilian rosewood. Here we are. Everything from the Wright brothers. I'm hoping that's not the Challenger. It's a beautiful guitar. Everything down to these old machined tuning pegs to, I'm gonna guess that that's like Neil Armstrong on the headstock. I'm gonna guess that. It's a balloon, guys. It's a balloon. It must be part of the history of flight. It's a one of one. If you look inside, there's also a little teardropity thing. I don't know what it is, but it's beautiful. This thing sounds really nice, guys. I mean, for like an $800,000 guitar, it plays pretty good. I don't know much about this guitar other than it's creepy and awesome. Actually, in fact, it even says, scary guitars. Accurate. Because as I've been informed, these are real animal bones. Not this one. I feel like that would be a strange animal. And this is actually blood. That's right. George Lynch, Mr. Scary's, decided to have a, a hobby. But outside of antiquing and fine wines, I'm gonna whittle some wood and I'll put skulls and blood on guitars. In his defense, this is a pretty badass guitar. Well, skull and crossbones, real original. Mr. Scary, but that's fine. He's the one I know what you can beat me up. I've seen those muscles. Those are like, I'm surprised it doesn't have a tremolo, but I like that. It's got one humbucker that says headhunter. I don't think I'd want my head hunted by George Lynch. I feel like that would be a scary endeavor. I don't think these strings have ever been played. And I don't know if you should play. This is like the devil's guitar. This is like if you were in Tenacious D and you needed to pick up Destiny and they're like, the devil's gonna run! Like this is a lot of whittling done well. If I had to say a review of the Mr. Scary guitar, I would say whittling done well with Mr. Scary. I don't think PETA is endorsing this company. I could hear the little animals going, How is this a 1920? The 1920 because Martin had a whole series of guitars that they found very nice examples of the guitars that had been terribly ruined. So what Martin did is they refurbished a bunch of found Martins. So this is a 19, 1920, I'm gonna say 0045 or 0042, but as you can see, it has the crazy inlay, the snowflake, totally in tune. 
when the sun goes down the road. I'm just kidding. Back in the day, Martin used this straight grain Brazilian rosewood. So nowadays you see all these guitars, when they do have Brazilian rosewood or a lot of these exotic woods, they want the grainiest, swirly swirls to show that it's the Brazilian. But back in the day, the quarter sawn straight grain Brazilian rosewood was where it was at. And you can see the crazy marquetry work on this. There is binding all over it. I mean, this is a really cool guitar. And the fact that Martin has saved this, beautiful Adirondack spruce top. Um, it looks to me like there's an ebony fretboard. I'm gonna say it's a 42. I think it's a 0042. It probably says inside. I don't know, maybe it doesn't. It actually sounds really good. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a 70th anniversary John Lennon museum model. I'm confused. It's, it's got like a picture. I mean, it must be John Lennon's drawing somehow like etched into this. But I'm gonna start off by saying that, thank you, Gibson. If you're gonna come out with a $15,000 guitar, put a mollusk in it. It has like the pickup, like the guitar that John Lennon used to play, the J160. This is definitely a period correct bridge because it's a bunch of horse crap because if, as you can see, at least it's not plastic, it's rosewood. So when you have rosewood attached to the body, it's better sounding, but it's upside down, which so you know structurally, not good. And then you turn it up and it goes rattle, rattle, rattle through your Marshall. I mean, I'm not a big fan of a pickup being right here, but like, why not? Put knobs on your guitar. They're playing the Rolling Stone Circus and it's, it's John Lennon and he's rocking out with like the Rolling Stones and it's Chuck Berry. And then Yoko Ono comes out and like they're doing like Chuck Berry's grooving. You got the Stones are grooving. John Lennon's rocking out. And then y uh, Yoko comes out and she's like, wah, wah. and Chuck Berry, the look on his face, is just like, shut your right up. Let me thank Chuck Berry for being the first to troll Yoko Ono because she ruined the Beatles. And She's not nice to Julian Lennon. So we have the Slash model here signed to Ernie, my friend Ernie, from Slash. But I really like this guitar. In a world where you don't know if it's a girl or if it's a boy or if it's something in between, it doesn't identify as anything. This is a Gibson that identifies as a Gibson, but wasn't a Gibson, but now is a Gibson. This is supposed to be the appetite for destruction guitar. And as you can see, it's got the slash marks from, from the slash arm. You got a little bit of the slash debris. And then on the back, you have Slash's belt buckle, which we all know is big. And on the back of it, it's signed Slash. Slash's original Gibson that he used on Appetite for Destruction wasn't a Gibson. It was a Gibson copy. I don't remember the shop he bought it from because I'm stupid and stoned. Uh, there's a guy who used to build guitars. So this is actually an officially made Gibson guitar copying a copy of a Gibson that Slash played that wasn't a real Gibson, but now it's a real Gibson copying the fake Gibson that's not a Gibson. I'm confused. Gibson, are we mad about this? What this really is is a custom shop Gibson that really does imitate a fake Gibson. Which to me, that's just a beautiful irony in all of that. But this is exactly to the T, like the guitar that Slash used to record Appetite for Destruction. No one plays it like Slash, but Slash doesn't even play it like Slash. Because when I go see Guns N' Roses live, even to this day, he always makes me wonder what is he gonna play next? He just puts the guitar up and he's got like a 75 rings on it. He starts doing like this thing and he kind of moves his hand back and forth. And he's just like owning into it. He digs in so deep. He has this beautiful blues shred that to this day, I don't think there's anybody that does it quite like Slash. He takes like this pentatonic, old school, in the box blues thing, and then just brings it to a level where it's like, you go, am I listening to like a technician who's like Eddie Van Halen? Or am I listening to a blues player who's just got this crazy soul? He plays so fast and so shreddy, but like there's so much humanity in how he plays. I don't want to scratch my friend's floor because I respect wood. Look at this, look at the, some people call me a tool. No, I'm just tooled. Let that sink in. I lost my girlfriend. But now I have a horse. 
took it out back and I shot it. I don't really know anything about this other than it looks like a wicker chair, had an acid trip with a garden, some mother toilet seat, and then they put an ashtray on top of it with some swirly swirl freaking whatever. And then someone was like, hey, hey, you think you're a tool now? Well, let me tool you up with some cacti and some skulls and some beautiful, beautiful leather work. Does it sound good? I don't even care. I used to love her, but I had- Is that the guitar I'm supposed to be playing that on? But this looks like the, this looks like the guitar I should be sad about. Inside it says it's 1927. I found the culprit. A brace. I'm gonna actually put this on the side for him because that was definitely falling apart. Let's see if we can tune the five strings. I'm gonna literally send a text message to my friend and say, I'm going to string this for you. I'm coming over with strings. I give total props to my boy Johnny A. Jonathan Antonopoulos. This is the Buck Lava of Gibson guitars. Look at this. I mean, I give Gibson a hard time all the time about the tops of wood. But I know Johnny A, and Johnny A is a fastidious individual, and he would never allow for a bullshit top out of Gibson. Johnny, you designed a badass guitar. It's a double cutaway, kind of Les Paul thingy, but with like F holes, but they aren't F holes. It's kind of like a split inlay, but it's not the normal split parallelogram. It's not the split block. It's like the crown thing. And then you got Johnny A's signature up here, and you got this awesome headstock. I mean, I love the black, how it goes down into the neck. It just drips down Gibson custom. You know what I like about Gene Simmons? He says, you know what? Vinnie Vincent did too long of a solo tonight. Give him the fucking ax! Next thing you know, the guy's a chick. How cool is that, guys? Nothing to do with guitar. Nothing to do with anything other than, hey, hey. Hey, I got a Grammy mom. Is it magma? Is it markers? Is that copper? I feel like Charlie Brown and Snoopy and Peppermint Patty sitting underneath all of like the clouds going, it's a football. It's a dinosaur. It's a rainbow. Get with the SG Zoot Suit Riot. Cause I don't know how much more rainbow you want to go. Maybe Jason Becker's guitar. The numbers guitar is pretty rainbowlicious. But this SG. Taste the rainbow. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already? <laughs>